Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to mod your GameCube so you can play, you know, homebrew, backup ROMs. I know that's what a lot of people want to, you know, be looking into. You don't know why. And so, yeah, this video is for educational purposes, not condoning piracy, you know, all of that good stuff. Obviously, you know, you have a, you'll need a GameCube to do this. And obviously, make sure you own the games that you'll be you know backing up as oh wow so with the i've seen a bunch of different solutions for this the one i'll be going down is the action replay method that'll help us boot up swiss which is like a homebrew launcher that'll allow us to you know boot up you know games and roms and whatnot for example and what we'll need as a bare minimum as a bare minimum for this method is a sd gecko and I just got this off Amazon and you'll need a two gigabyte or less SD card. So you'll need an actual SD card. I bought a micro SD card and obviously I'll just be plugging that in and I'll then just plug that into the bottom like so. And then this will go into slot B of the memory card on your GameCube. So this is the bare minimum that you need. You can technically put games on here because it's two gig or less, the compatibility, you're not gonna get many games on there. Like I know Animal Crossing is about 15 meg, so it's super low, but then there's games that's like 800 meg, 900 meg, a gig, maybe even more than a gig. And as a result, this is not the best solution. And the solution I recommend, so you still need this to just boot up Swiss, the solution I recommend is this SD to SP2. So it's a micro SD card to the serial port to on your GameCube. So this is where the next sort of requirement comes in. You need a one of the original style GameCubes that have all these serial ports. The one we're interested in is this the smallest one, serial port two. And the SD to SP2 will be plugging into there. If it is nice and simple plug and play, but you do need this older style of GameCube. If you don't have it, if you have the new one where they don't have the serial port two, then you're out of luck to be fair. You will have to have some other, you know, method for this. So, you know, like this can still work, but again, it's not as good as doing SD to SP2. And on here, we'll just be storing the ROMs, the games. That's all we'll be doing. Here, we'll be storing Swiss to actually, you know, play the games. And that's it. You obviously need a method for, and this is the process pretty much similar on Mac as well, because we'll just need to format the micro SD and the SD cards. So just figure out how to format it on your, you know, relevant OS. But apart from that, it's the same. You need a way to connect up your SD cards or your micro SD card to your computer. We've got this anchor dongle that has a micro SD card and a SD card, you know, slot. So that covers it both ways. So if I did just have a dedicated SD card, or a micro SD card without the adapter for the SD, you know, SP2, then you're all good to go. And like I said, you will need an action replay disc. And these aren't the cheapest things. I can't remember how much they're going to mine for. I think about 20 quid. I think so. And I just specifically bought it for this. If you already have one, then this is fantastic because the SD to SP2 is cheap. You may already have a micro SD or an SD card that's two gig or less from some old system or camera. If so, fantastic. Compatibility can be a bit patchy. I found that Scandis, SanDisk ones work really well. Also for the main SD to SP2 part where you'll be putting your games on, it goes up to two terabyte in terms of support. I've got a 256 gig. That'll do 100, 200 games easily. So really, I think two terabytes is pretty overkill, but I think probably people would get away with 64, 128 gig. If you want to go higher, go for that. The reason I got this one, it, it wasn't too expensive. It was, it was that thing. It came down to money. It's pure, pure and simple. So let me show you what to do on the computer side. Then we'll switch onto this and connect it. I'm connecting it via HDMI adapter, which I'll show sure I can do that because this has the you know the digital AV out. Again, that's just an optional thing. Just makes things look a bit better. So let me put this. Aside. Ooh, must drop that. Let me put that aside and let's switch over to the computer now. And do... Okay, so now that we are on the computer side, let's go ahead and you know download what we need to do. 
So we'll download Swiss. So if we just Google Swiss GameCube, and I'll provide a link to this, but just go to the GitHub page, go to releases, click that, and just download the latest release. I'll be downloading the seven zip file, that one there. So I recommend that you go ahead and also download seven zip, which will allow us to extract it. If you have another tool that allows you to extract it for fine, you know, just feel free to use that and download the 32 or 64 bit version. To figure out what version you have, go to your computer, go to computer, system properties, and you'll say that if you're on Mac, it should be 64-bit, and I'm 64-bit, so I can grab the 64-bit version, otherwise you grab the 32-bit. Download that, and let's just quickly install this. For me, I've already got it, so you'll automatically detect I've got it on the D drive, which is where I put my software and games, and click install, otherwise you just install in the default if you don't want to change it. That's that done. Before we extract that, the other thing I want to show you is vim.net. So vim.net allows you to you know, get hold of ROMs and you can rip your own ROMs if you want to or you can download them you know, online. Like I said, this video is not condoning piracy. It is for educational purposes and I recommend that you own all the games that you're going to get ROMs of, which I do. So just bear that in mind, but if you use this, go to the vault Go to GameCube and this is very safe. The download speeds aren't too bad. There's not like you know pop-up ads or anything. So let's say if I wanted to download this, for example, click that. I've got that game. This is one of the games I've got. Click download. After a few seconds, it will start downloading. And it's in a 7-zip format as well. So click cancel. So you need 7-zip for this as well. You can only download one at a time. So now let's go ahead and let's extract Swiss. So first of all. Let's go to the downloads folder and I can delete this now. Refresh, right click Swiss, 7-zip, extract two, and, and let me refresh, it's not appearing. In here, there's a lot of files. Really, the only one we are interested, because there's Action Replay, there's GC Loader, there's a bunch of stuff. The only one we're interested in is if we go to doll, we're interested in this compressed doll. That is it, nothing else other than that. You can use a regular one, but we'll be using the compressed one. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and plug in the SD cards into my computer. I'll, put, I'll plug in the one that we're gonna put into the SD gecko first. And we'll format that and sort that out. Okay, so this is what it's currently looking like, but let me format it. To do that, go to your computer, right click it, and also make sure you've selected the right one and backed up anything that you want on it, because it will wipe everything. So click format, make sure you've got the right drive. And for file system, select FAT32. And it does technically support XFAT, but FAT32 I found is fine. Some people have said if you have issues, format it to FAT16 and you can do that by, you know, getting a formatting tool online. I name it SD Gecko. Quick format is fine. Click start. Okay. And it's the same if you're on Linux or Mac, just format it in the OS relevant way. And that's it. Now what we can do is copy this. paste it here and that's it that's all we need i did have a swiss folder but that got created as a result of you know me plugging it in prior so this is all you need here if you did go down the sd gecko route of putting games on this sd card which you can't get many but if you do you just put your isos here and that's it so now let me show you what to do with the other sd card that we're going to have in the sd to sp2 so I'll you know, safely eject this. Where is the safe ejection? Can't even see it. I literally cannot see safe injection. I'll eject it from here. <laughs> eject. Taking a while, it's gonna 
At this point, there's no writing going on, so let me just unplug it. That's that done. Um, for refresh, it should uh, still for some reason there, and uh, that's fine. Okay, so now I'm going to plug in the 256 gigabyte micro SD card, and this has to be a micro SD card for the SD to SP2. And in here, again, this Swiss folder is not required, it gets automatically created. You just do the same thing where you, you know, right click it, you would format it. And so by default, the format has become XFAT. That is fine because obviously it's a pretty big, you know, file system. You can format it as FAT32. I found XFAT is fine for this, but you can go to FAT32 if you really need to. And, but yeah, I've, but I found X, X5 is fine. If FAT32 does not appear as it does not with the larger capacities, feel free to use a formatting tool, otherwise use XFAT. Just put your ISOs here, they need to be in the .ISO format, and that's it, we're good to go, and we can actually switch over. So I'll unplug this, and what we'll do now is switch over to our GameCube. So I'll see you there momentarily. So now it's time to set up the GameCube side of it. So we've done all the SD card stuff. So I want to mention one thing. I did make a little mistake in the, you know, the first part of the video where we was on the PC in terms of formatting it. So when you format it, make sure you select FAT, not FAT32 for the, not for the game stuff, for this one. I found sometimes it doesn't work because I just tried it. And select FAT and more importantly, select default allocation size. I'll mention that in that part of the video, I'll literally just put like a little bit piece of text on the screen so you know that. That was a little mistake that I made, so my bad, but yeah, that's what you need to do. Okay, so now let's just get this all set up. First of all, let's, you know, set this up, which is the, I have a micro SD card, but it could be just be an SD only. This is with Swiss, and we'll just plug, put this in. <laughs> it's a bit awkward, so let me put my Galaxy Fold down. Okay, we'll plug this in. That's if you have a micro SD card. If you just have a straight SD card, you grab your SD Gecko where it says SD at the bottom, plug it in. It only goes in one way. Boom, done, that's it. Now we can actually plug this in to our GameCube. So we just plug it in. Make sure it is it, it is properly in there. That's in there now. Now let's time it's time to set up our oh my phone keeps falling. SD to SP2. So this right here. So find where it says this side facing side, and this is where the SD card slot is. Right at the top, you just plug it in, like so, and that's it. Nothing more to it than that. It just just hangs a little lower than this, just so you know. And now we can plug this in. So to do that, pretty simple. You just flip your GameCube over. Remember, you need an original style GameCube with for this. Go to serial port two, unplug this. Now grab this. So where it says this side face inside, this side you know, has to be facing the inside way. And where it says this side face outside, has to be facing the outside way. So you just plug it in. And there we go, that's it. It doesn't like slotting nice like a USB where it's pretty hard in there. You have to give it a, a decent tug. With this, it is a bit loose, but once it's in there, so don't you know push it too high because thinking oh we haven't probably you haven't like felt uh, it slot in. Just slot it in. Once that's in there, put the serial port two cover on, and that will prevent it from you know coming out anyway. So that's all good to go. So now let's flip this over, and just one last step, and that is action replay disc. So now, let's put this in. And let's connect up a GameCube controller. And that's it. Now, it's time to turn it on. So if you turn it on. And... Just wait for the GameCube to launch up. The action replay will automatically launch. If you put in after launching the GameCube, you can just, you know, play it via the game player section. And then Swiss will appear here. Boom, there we go. 
And if you have games on your SD Gecko, they will appear here, but you can't play them from here. So just go to the compressed, press A, and Swiss will launch up in a few seconds. And if it doesn't launch up, what I have, I've had that issue before. I just genuinely find if you turn the system off, turn it back on, and try it again, it should work. And action replay is on. Once it launches up, we'll press A. Press A. And now Swiss should hopefully launch up now. There we go, it has launched. So if you have that issue, just turn your system off, then I'm back on again. And it's got all the games from Serial Port, you know, too. And that's it. <laughs> if you want to go to this bottom section where these settings are, you just press B. And it goes down to here, and you can use like the D-pad to navigate, and use A to select any settings. You can change system sound, there's a bunch of things. They can change most, honestly, unless you really know what you're doing, just leave it as default. And you can go to you know info as well about a particular game and it shows you the region the version the power the video mode the audio like that sort of stuff and let's return and we can just press b to go back to here and then we can launch a game up so let's launch up let's launch up paper mario and from here you can actually go to press y for cheats or you can press x for settings and in settings, you can change the video mode. You can force it to different video modes, which is pretty cool. You can force widescreen for certain games. And again, just leave it as default unless you want to mess around with that stuff. Press A to boot. It will just, you know, you'll go through patching the file. That's fine. This can take a bit of time. Just wait patiently and your game will launch up again this video is not condoning piracy it is for educational purposes only and here we go so we can press any button remind me of the Wii Just turn the volume down and I don't have a memory card in slot A but that's fine if you had a memory card it'd be fine so I could continue without it and see it works fine you know the load times are great it just it just works fantastic this method is my recommended method because you can have up to two terabytes in the SD to SP2 it's really simple plug and play and you don't need any soldering, you don't need to open stuff up. The action replay is the most expensive part of it I'd say because yeah micro SD cards 256 isn't the cheapest, but it's not that expensive, but it's also, it can be reused for other stuff. If in a year or two you decide, oh, I'm going to sell my GameCube, or I don't want to play, use it anymore, because the setup is so easy, you could literally just wipe the SD card, use it in your, let's say, digital camera, or in your phone, or something, and then come back and reset up Swiss if you really want to. Yeah, I, I know there's no memory card in slot A. And... Yeah, I was meant to press it. You, you press yes for continue without saving. Save it. That was my bad. Okay, but that's it. That's how you mod your GameCube so you can play ROMs and Homebrew. If you have any questions, feel free to join the Discord group. There's a link in the description. And I'll show you, you know, everything that you need on, I mean, er, the, there'll be, you know, channels on there that you can join. And hopefully you enjoy this modding video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.